So, wow, wow, wow. Dave Chappelle firing shots this morning. Ooh, I look like a pretty boy with this camera. My skin's so soft. No, it's not. But yeah. Let's talk about it. So in all likelihood, you are at least somewhat familiar with this story because somehow this has stayed in the news cycle. It feels like longer than the, the botched Afghanistan exit, which is kind of wild when you think about it. But uh, main thing, he and Netflix, of course, have been facing a lot of backlash after his new stand-up special, The Closer, was accused of being transphobic. A lot of online debate happening, Netflix employees staging a walkout, demanding that the company be more inclusive and considerate to the trans community. But for his part, Netflix co-CEO Ted Sarandos has largely defended Chappelle. And as far as Chappelle himself, you have people wondering if he and trans employees at Netflix are going to have a sit down and talk it out. Right, because it was being reported by the media that he was invited to speak to trans employees, but you actually had Chappelle posting a video on Instagram and starting things off by saying, It's been said in the press that I was invited to speak to the transgender employees at Netflix and I refused. That is not true. If they had invited me, I would have accepted it, although I am confused about what we are speaking about. With him going on to say that he has seen what everyone has said about him and adding, You said you want a safe working environment at Netflix. Well, it seems like I'm the only one that can't go to the office anymore. He then says that everyone's painting this as though it's him versus the LGBTQ community, but saying he doesn't see it that way. Instead saying he views it as a problem surrounding corporate interests and what he is and isn't allowed to say on the stage. Regarding the idea that he's being canceled, he noted that he made a documentary and was invited to a bunch of film festivals, but after the controversy, he's no longer welcome at those. And when this controversy came out about the close of, they began disinviting me from these film festivals. And now, today, not a film company, not a movie studio, not a film festival, nobody will touch this film. Thank God for Ted Sarandos and Netflix. He's the only one that didn't cancel me yet. Though in this, he announced dates and select cities where fans can attend a screening of that documentary. With Chappelle then going on in his set to say he's willing to meet with the trans community, but he doesn't want to be summoned by them. He refuses to bend to their demands, and in fact, issuing three demands of his own. First of all, you cannot come if you have not watched my special from beginning to end. You must come to a place of my choosing and a time of my choosing. And thirdly, you must admit that Hannah Gadsby is not funny. And the shots were fired. And in case you missed this, Hannah Gadsby was one of the many people who spoke out about the controversy. If you don't know her, she's a comedian slash performance artist with shows like Please Like Me, who also has a hugely popular Netflix special, Nanette, a few years back. With Gadsby actually becoming part of this story because Sarandos actually named her in one of his statements. Right back when he was trying to say, hey, wait, Netflix is actually an inclusive platform because we've showcased content like hers. Though we saw Gadsby shooting back at Sarandos at that time on Instagram. Writing just a quick note to let you know that I would prefer if you didn't drag my name into your mess. Now I have to deal with even more of the hate and anger that Dave Chappelle's fans like to unleash on me every time Dave gets $20 million to process his emotionally stunted partial worldview. Fuck you and your amoral algorithm, cult. I do shits with more backbone than you. That's just a joke. I definitely didn't cross the line because you just told the world there isn't one. Right, and so after Chappelle released this new video, Gadsby was then trending on Twitter, tons of people uh, defending her, tons of people going after her. Those defending saying things like, Gadsby used her comedy platform in order to talk about how being constantly dehumanized wears away the soul. She broke what to Chappelle is the card rule of comedy and stop taking the fucking joke. You also had some accusing Dave Chappelle of being guilty of the thing that he's accusing Anna Gadsby of, with the likes of Hassan Piker chiming in. It was just like a f***ing boomer yelling about things that uh, he cannot understand. And tweeting, Dave Chappelle is doing the net, but for transphobia. With places like Gawker even leaning into that aspect saying, yeah, Dave Chappelle and Hannah Gadsby, they're, they're less comedians and more people that make organized rants. So of course, there were many on Chappelle's side saying, yeah, Gadsby isn't funny. When you look and hear the audience reaction in the video, he's getting tons of applause and support. People also sticking up for him online, saying that he shouldn't have to bend to anyone, that he should not be canceled. So yeah, another day of everyone on the internet fighting everyone else on the internet, just like every day before and every day that will be until the sun explodes, consuming our little molehill among the stars, and finally the universe We'll get that peace and quiet. This is a new show.
Yeah, the uh, Earth's eventual doom aside, I, I would love to know your thoughts regarding the, the Dave Chappelle, Hannah Gadsby, Netflix story. I've seen takes from Dave Chappelle's an icon, a free speech hero, we need to support him, he's the best, all the way to people saying, no, Dave's horrible, he's acting like a victim, but he's the person that's spewing all this hate. Yeah, I'd love to know what camp you land in, or if you're somewhere in between, any and all thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in those comments down below. Then, and you better hit the like button for this story, uh, let's talk about cocaine hippos. So, unless you're a big cocaine and or hippo aficionado, you might not have known that Colombian drug kingpin Pablo Escobar had cocaine hippos. Legally smuggling several hippos onto his estate back in the 1980s, but after his death in 1993, their offspring were abandoned on the property, and with no natural predators, they thrived and multiplied. With scientists long warning that hippos threaten biodiversity, urging the government to either kill or sterilize them, the government deciding to do the latter option using a chemical contraceptive developed by the U.S. Agriculture Department, that leading to an animal rights lawyer suing, arguing that there was a safer alternative, and then recently in a parallel law lawsuit filed in the U.S. by the Animal Legal Defense Fund? They asked the U.S. District Court in Cincinnati to give the hippos interested person status so that two experts in wildlife sterilization from Ohio could be deposed in the Colombian case. And the court did just that. And while experts have said that, you know, that this U.S. court order, it might not have weight in Colombia, this is very big because this ruling is believed to be the first of its kind in an American court. And as a result, you had animal rights groups celebrating the move as a major historical victory. Right? The U.S. justice system just granted animals personhood status, with the ALDF calling this ruling a critical milestone stone in its fight to have the legal system recognize enforceable rights for animals. But yeah, I guess the main point of this story is that animal rights in the U.S. may have just drastically advanced because drug kingpin Pablo Escobar could not just stop at flooding Colombia with cocaine, he had to flood it with hippos too. But from that, I want to take a second to thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, NordVPN.com slash Phil. Now long time viewers know that I've spent the last few years telling you about NordVPN, so I'm going to take time to remind you why you should use it. Right, with holiday travel around the corner, you want to be protected when waiting in airports or train stations. It's just not worth the risk of using your phone or tablets on a public server. With Nord, you are always protected. And with their strict no logs policy, they don't track, collect, or share your private data. Also, speaking of airports, NordVPN gets you that uninterrupted streaming so you can say bye bye to buffering. Like, especially when traveling with the kids, being able to get that content anywhere, anytime, uninterrupted is a game changer. Just because you're making sure you're protected doesn't mean you should have to deal with slowdown. And just one account lets you connect and secure up to six devices in any combination so you can protect yourself and a loved one or two. So, hey, make NordVPN a part of your online security plan. Head on over to nordvpn.com slash Phil right now to get a huge discount on a two-year plan plus four additional free months. And I say right now because those four extra months could be gone tomorrow. So if you're thinking about getting NordVPN, now is the time to do it. Plus, hey, it's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Then in, wow, this is gonna get way uglier before it's over news, we should talk about what's happening with Kesha and Dr. Luke. And to bring you back up to speed, because it's been a minute, back in 2014, Kesha accused music producer Dr. Luke of sexual, physical, verbal, and emotional abuse to the point where she said she nearly lost her life. And since then, there's been a legal back and forth, lawsuits filed, cases dropped and dismissed. But today, we're talking about a continuing lawsuit where Dr. Luke is suing Kesha over the rape accusation and Kesha is countersuing. And it's very likely we're we're gonna be learning a lot because last week a judge denied Sony's request to keep certain documents and contract information confidential. Also, today you had the Hollywood Reporter saying that Dr. Luke plans to allege that Kesha's rape allegation has cost him $46 million. Apparently saying that he made $78 million between 2006 and 2015 for producing and writing Billboard chart toppers. But saying that after the allegations from Kesha, artists stopped working with him and his income has died. Also, we learned that a judge will soon start deciding what evidence is admissible in the case and there's gonna be a ton of back and forth there. With the outlet reporting that Kesha wants to prevent Dr. Luke from having a psychiatrist test that her allegations are consistent with a false report, also aiming to block a witness from claiming that Dr. Luke is incapable of rape, as well as trying to keep her personal life out of it, including the question surrounding who her biological father is. But also, the Hollywood Reporter saying that Dr. Luke is likewise trying to shut things down, reporting that he wants to get rid of testimony about his wealth or copyright claims, as well as anything alleging that he's a drug dealer, with him also allegedly trying to get rid of testimony involving a Lady Gaga rape claim, as well as general Me Too discussions. But yeah, ultimately, that's where we are. We're gonna have to continue to follow it, but this has been several years in the making, and we're closer than ever to see how the chips are gonna fall. Then in a big what the fuck update regarding the Alec Baldwin shooting tragedy that we talked about yesterday, you have the outlet The Rap reporting, the gun that killed Russ cinematographer Helena Hutchins last Thursday was used by crew members that morning for live ammunition target practice. With Rap citing an individual with knowledge of the set, that insider allegedly saying, a number of crew members had taken prop guns from the set, including the gun that killed Hutchins to go plinking, a hobby in which people shoot at beer cans with live ammunition to pass the time. 
The Wrap reporting when asked for comment, the producers of Russ referred to a previous statement where they said the safety of our cast and crew is a top priority. You also had Fox News reporting this and saying that representatives of production did not respond to a request for comment. With a number of people in the industry reacting to this news, shocked, including the likes of James Gunn, who tweeted, Jesus, as well as, for the record, this is not something crew members should be doing with a gun from set. Then in big social media news, while a lot of the focus this week is understandably on Facebook with the release of the Facebook papers, there's also more happening. And specifically, I'm talking about earlier today, you had leaders from Snapchat, TikTok, and YouTube all testifying before Congress over child safety. Notably, this is the first time Snap and TikTok have ever testified, and this is coming as platforms are getting hit and focused on regarding minors' mental health. One of the key takeaways from the hearings today concerns an update to a law passed all the way back in 1998. COPPA. And if the proposed law was passed, the updates would make it so that social media companies can no longer collect the personal info of teens between 13 and 15 without their consent. It would also reportedly establish a digital marketing bill of rights for teens that limits the collection of their personal information. It would also ban targeted advertising directed as kids, as well as create several other standards, including an eraser button that would eliminate personal information from a child or teen account when technologically feasible. While you had each of these companies generally saying that they support legislation to boost online protection for kids, it was very hard to get them to commit to anything specific. With one of the most Notable and frustrating exchanges happening between Senator Ed Markey and a Snapchat exec. Try do, you to. do you support my child protection, my teen protection law? Do you I support think, it? So, Senator, we agree that there should be additional protections put against young people to protect them further from... Right. You, so you've had a chance to look at the child online privacy protection update that I've introduced. It's been out there for years. Do you support it or not? I think, Senator, we'd love to talk to you a bit more about no, no. some of the uh, we've issues. No, no, we've Listen, this is, this is just what drives us crazy. We want to talk. We want to talk. We want to talk. This bill's been out there for years, and you still don't have a view on it. Do you support it or not? I think there are things that we would like to work with you on, Senator. <laughs> it's like trying to ask my wife what she wants for dinner. I'm like, you want pizza? You know, I think it's a great question. I think it's something that we should definitely talk about. Okay, Chinese food. You know, I, I think that we agree with you that food definitely needs to happen tonight. I mean, I just don't know how you, pun intended, wouldn't snap at that executive. But yeah, if anything, I think this is a showcasing of a conversation and a debate that's going to be happening more and more moving forward. Especially because the fight for kids' attention is on. It's been raging and it's just gonna get more complicated, especially with Facebook saying, hey, the kids are the future. Whether it be Facebook specifically or a lot of social media platforms in general, I don't think a lot of the trust is there, or should it necessarily be there? And then, we should definitely talk about Kyle Rittenhouse back in the news. And it's been a minute, so to bring you up to speed, as the Chicago Tribune explains, Rittenhouse killed two and wounded another by shooting them with an AR-15-style rifle while patrolling downtown Kenosha amid the turmoil surrounding the shooting of Jacob Blake, a black man by a white police officer. And noting, despite not being old enough to openly carry a gun, Rittenhouse volunteered as an armed security guard after businesses had been burned and vandalized during demonstrations held the previous night. With Rittenhouse then being charged with first degree intentional homicide, first degree reckless homicide, and attempted first degree intentional reckless homicide. But Rittenhouse and his lawyers claim that he is innocent because he was acting in self-defense. And the huge news coming out today is specifically about that defense. Because Circuit Judge Bruce Schroeder just made clear to the lawyers they cannot call the two men that were killed victims. With Judge Schroeder saying the word victim is a loaded, loaded word. With that clearly frustrating the prosecutors who, according to the Tribune, suggested the judge was creating a double standard here, saying, okay, these two people that are no longer here to defend themselves, we can't call them victims victims, but Assistant District Attorney Thomas Binger noting that the defense is going to use words like riot or looter and arsonist, and saying those words are loaded, if not more loaded than the term victim. But yeah, ultimately what we're seeing here is a very notable update in the setup for a very big trial that's going to be getting a lot of attention. Jury selection will start on November 1st, and then it's off to the races. But ultimately, that is where this story and today's show ends. As always, whether it be this last one, the first one, anything in between, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below. And of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love you faces and I'll see you tomorrow.